The Stone House Series, The War is Over, Chapter 15. In the place of protection, Laz covered his ears with both hands as he yelled loudly, Mordecai! How can they hear what's going on? They're all cheering for Jesus. How can they tell what he's saying? Mordecai shouted back, How do you hear him? With my ears, of course. Mordecai shook his head, hollering back, Listen closer! Only feet in front of Lazarus was the Jesus, Ben, and Martha scene perfectly presented, as if they were watching topside from a hundred feet away. Jesus was speaking. Martha, will you bring Mary here to me? What? How cool is that? Mordecai, I, I hear him talking from the inside out. I don't need my outside ears to hear Jesus. Seeing how things were shaking down and how his leaving could be coming at any moment, Lazarus was getting curious and maybe a little nervous. So what happens when someone leaves this place and goes back topside, I mean? Both Queen Esther and I were in attendance when the young man from Nain left this place and was reinstalled into his renovated earth suit. Laz still had to shout, and what happened? What was it like? When he left, at first he glowed a little, and then he sparkled from the inside out, like a hundred candles burning. A moment later was a big burst of light with a wind as if a great deal of air left with them. And all in all, it only took four, maybe, maybe five seconds. Will I know beforehand? Mordecai shrugged his shoulders, saying, Most are here watching because they've never seen anyone leave. It usually happens fast. You will be given very little notice, but you will have the opportunity to choose of whether to stay here or to go. Oh my, Lazarus, look. Ben and Martha have returned. They are back at your sister's chicken coop. Ben and Martha retraced their steps to the chicken coop, and Benjamin waited for her there. Picking up her dish from the chopping block, she glanced towards the home's eastern window. Mary was seated there, her eyes locked on the Jordan Road. Martha snuck up to the northeast corner of the house and slid along the wall. Mary, whispered Martha through the open window. Martha, what are you doing? And why are you whispering? Shh, Mary, be quiet. Why? What's going on? Oh, Mary, Martha wanted to shout instead of whisper. I have seen Jesus. He's at Benjamin's cliff, and he called for you, and he's waiting for you there. Oh, Martha, if he had only come sooner, it might have made a difference. But Lazarus has been dead four days. Mary, what are you saying? But Martha couldn't even finish. Mary was getting up and making noise. Mary, no, wait. But Mary was already heading across the room, making more of a fuss. Making a show of grabbing her shawl with exaggerated tears, Mary headed for the door. There were 27 other people in the house. Half had been present when Ben arrived with Jesus' message that first night. The others had come from Jerusalem to take part in mourning the death of Lazarus. Each one took their traditions and positions seriously, and each responded immediately to Mary's cue. She was going to the tomb to weep there, and they were going with. Mary knew where she was going and headed for the roadside cliff. Twenty-seven people didn't know where they were going, but they followed Mary. It was only minutes and she was running up to Jesus, kneeling at his feet. The mourners were close behind, but instead of arriving at the family tomb, 
they found themselves facing off with Jesus. Some had unpleasantly encountered him before. Mary was weeping loudly, tears dripping on Jesus' sandals. Some of the 27 had their hackles up and were scowling, roughly repeating among themselves their displeasure of Jesus' tardy presence. Benjamin and Martha were about 50 feet behind the mourners, wondering how everything had gone so suddenly wrong. Mary said, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. Where were you? Why didn't you come when we called for you? It's your fault my brother's in his grave. If you cared at all, you would have come right here, right away. Jesus appraised the mess before him, 27 wailing or belligerent mourners and a weeping Mary. He looked out past the crowd of people to a host of demons, beings who press to beg, borrow, or steal a living human body to work their magic through. Creatures mixing up their concoction in a blackened cauldron and cooking up the mash. Don't let the enemy's use of these people push this sideways. They're only confused people providing fallen angels a human voice. Pull in the harvest, bring Laz back, and turn this all around. Jesus heard the demons laughing in the distance. Calling to watching people, he asked, where have you placed his body? Determined voices answered, This way, Lord, come and see. Lord, God, my Father, of all these precious people, only two stand here with me. Twenty feet ahead walked Ben and Martha, leading the way to her brother's tomb. I will not leave my friend Lazarus in the grave. He is coming back. Hot tears rolled down the face of Jesus. He caged the anger held towards the worthless religious practice of so many. Why do you choose to disbelieve my father's goodness and resist the knowledge that he and I are one? Whispered voices rose from those who walked beside and behind him. <clears throat> The laughing demons have moved a little closer. Thinking they were safe, demons mocked Jesus through the willing voices. Look how he loved Lazarus. See, he is crying. They are vultures sitting on the shoulders of the willing. Oh, really? Then where was he when Laz lay dying? They are crows feasting on the good seed that I sent and planted. Yeah, he healed others. Why didn't he heal his friend? They are demons passing pictures of human minds, whispering words and using their lips. Jesus had Mary believing he would raise her brother from the dead. They are rabbits allowed to eat at the gardens of my friends. The tomb was a cave covered with a large stone, which was cut to the shape of a disc. Together, waiting for instructions, both Ben and Martha stood beside the grave of her brother. Thirty feet away and five feet higher in elevation stood Jesus and John. Father, you have more people to be in one place here. Where are they? Emil the goat herder arrived from somewhere unannounced and stood close to Ben and Martha. Well now, how grand is that? Thank you. And John moved down to stand by Ben and Emil. Martha moved up and stood by Jesus. Now, Mary, where are you? In the hollow space halfway between where he stood and the tomb, Jesus saw Martha's sister sobbing and centered among the weeping and wailing mourners. 
Mary, with empty hands and an empty heart. Hmm. Well then, this will have to do. Take away the stone. Slapped in the face with a wet rag, Martha responded with her first thought. Lord, by this time his body stinks. He's been dead four days. Oh my, did I, I really say that? Martha, do you remember the words I told you? That if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Lord God, Jesus, your eyes, they are twinkling again. From the center of the soul, Martha saw the garden of her heart. The words of Jesus planted. They had been guarded, protected, and now were bursting forth with life. She scooped up giant armfuls and piled them up around her brother. And then she yelled it. She screamed it, and she triumphantly hollered it out. Benjamin, Emo, John, get your backs into it. Roll that stone away. The three men didn't hesitate a heartbeat. They threw themselves into the cover stone and rolled it back, and the stink did come floating out of the cave. Jesus observed each one's reactions as a southeast breeze carried the dead man's odor past the party of 27. Some turned to escape the stench. Some held their breath, waiting for the wind to change. Martha swallowed hard without breathing. Her eyes started to water. The fragrant smell of their spikenard perfume wrapping had been overwhelming, overpowered by the decomposing of his body. On the winds of time, memories are often carried by things that are not consciously considered. We win, Jesus told Martha, and this is a moment in forever which will always be remembered. I want all people to know how and why we win. I want them to see and to hear and even to smell and remember. Looking to heaven, Jesus said, Father, everyone heard, but some in a minority didn't like his words. What? He did it again. He called God his father. How dare he call Almighty God his father? But they did what any coward does when they were small in strength and number. They clenched their fists and whined to one another. Jesus continued on by saying, I thank you that you have heard me. Verbal confusion slid down past the eyes of the 27. Huh? What? Did we miss something? I thought the first words were, Father. Now you talk as if you, you've said something more. You are just too weird. And I know you always hear me. Will you not understand? Four days ago I sent my words ahead for you to plant and guard to grow. But because of the people that stand by, I said it, that they may believe that you sent me. Martha had her eyes glued on the door of the tomb, and she was ready to run to her brother when he walked out. In the spirit arena, Benjamin, John, and Emil were all pulling life out of Jesus and throwing it right in the cave mouth of two Lazarus, they were still running hard and doing their part. In this race to rescue Lazarus, the five of them were getting to the finish line at the same time. And then there was Mary. Her heart ached, as if her garden had been rooted up by a pack of feral hogs. I am a hollow, empty vessel. Both my hands are empty. I have brought forth nothing grown in my garden from your words. Oh, God, help me. I am so alone. And with a loud voice, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. In the silence which followed, his commanding words, a gentle breath enveloped them all. 
Mary dropped to her knees, sobbing, and she put her face in the dirt. And through the tears and grime, that fresh breeze brought a distant memory past her nose. She was 12 years old, and her father was standing in the doorway with a gift. It was a small plant with bell-shaped lavender flowers on it. The flower had arrived with a caravan, which had come from the mountain of the North Country. Her father had only said, many people associate sadness with this plant, but the pretty purple flowers remind me of you. Keep this for me. The plant was spikenard, and Mary smelled the sweet oil aroma from its purple flowers. And she stopped crying and looked up to see where the smell was coming from. In the distance, she could hear the shuffling sound of tiny steps as Lazarus inched his way out the door, wrapped from head to foot with grave cloth. Watching him try to walk, Jesus said, Loose him and let him go.